Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Hiba Siddiqui, and I'm the program assistant here at Dress for Success Austin. We are so excited to be hosting our third and final session of our three-part series all about credit with Experian. I'm happy to introduce our speaker for today. His name is Kevin Busin. Um, he's the Senior Partner Manager for Experian's Credit Match Client Service Team. Um, his role, in his role, he helps major banks promote their credit cards offering within the Experian ecosystem, where members can evaluate them based on their personal credit profile, apply, and have the confidence to get approved. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the part partnerships that he has managed includes, includes American Express, Capital One, Chase, Discover, and Pedal. We're so, we are extremely excited to have him join us today and give us a little bit of insight on how to choose the right credit card. Um, and on that note, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Kevin. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you all. And um, it's great to be here. Uh, as Hiba mentioned, I have been working with uh, credit card issuers um, in kind of a marketing capacity since uh, 2014, so about seven years or so. Um, and it's kind of amazing how much has changed. Uh, there are a lot of offers out there. And I think from a general consumer standpoint, it, uh, it can be very easy to get kind of a little intimidated or just not really know where to start, right? Um, but that's what I'm here for. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through Experian's credit match features. Um, credit match is an area of the Experian site. So if you become a free member with Experian where you can kind of you know keep an eye on your own credit profile, credit match is within that experience. So it's in the app, it's on the website, uh, both desktop and mobile. So the only other thing I was going to add in there is um, as I'm going along, and I'm going to kind of be walking you through even a demo of Credit Match, um, Hiba is going to keep an eye on that chat function for me. And if you guys have any questions on anything I'm talking about, feel free to throw, throw it out there, um, and we can address it there for you. I'm happy, I'm happy to do that. Um, but let me, and just as long as everyone can kind of hear me and see my screen, should be ready to get started. So uh, first and foremost, just a little kind of housekeeping, um, just for general legal purposes. Um, uh, it's very, this is meant to be kind of informational. I can't actually discuss any kind of um, uh, personal or specific credit questions or credit report questions with you all. Um, but, you know, if if that ever comes up, you know, that's something that you can handle if you sign up for an account, you can talk to Experian about. I just, I personally can't do it for you. So everything I'm going to present, you know, is going to be kind of at a, at a little bit higher of a level, but, uh, but I really am, am confident that it should kind of get you off on the, on the right foot when it comes to looking for a new credit card. Um, so right away, you know, to start, I wanted to give you an overview of how we approach at Experian, uh, what credit match is, or why, why we even have it as a section of our site. Um, some of the other features of Experian, uh, you may have heard of Experian Boost, and I'm gonna touch on that too during our live demo, but that's a really kind of fun feature that's it's only been live for the first couple of years, for the last couple of years, I should say. Um, but that's a way for you to get some um, increases in your credit score based on uh, some things that you're paying for right now that you may not realize can affect your credit. Um, and I'll touch on that in a minute. But really, you know, we want to help our members save money, right? And we want to help you stay on top of your finances. And with Credit Match, we want you to be able to access credit that you need. Um, everybody needs credit. It's a very common thing in the United States. Um, and when it's used responsibly, it can be a really valuable tool. And uh, Experian's mission, our core mission, is to really give financial power to all. So I don't know if anybody's mentioned that in the previous two sessions that you've already had. I've only been working at Experian since the beginning of this year. Um, I was still working with banks, but I was just with a different company before then. And that really kind of spoke to me. I think it's, it's very consumer centric. 
you know, giving financial power to all, because it's not about only certain people being able to apply for cards and get, you know, a really fancy, exciting credit card that, you know, gives all these points and miles. Like, no, 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 there's, there are cards for every single person in this country, you know, no matter what your, your background or circumstances might be. And here are some kind of, I thought, interesting quotes um, when Experian looks at or looked at creating a tool such as Credit Match, right? And these may even sound familiar to some of you. And just some of the little highlighted parts. You know, if people are applying for credit cards and they don't have kind of the, the information that they need, they may get denied, right? Getting denied for a credit card isn't fun. It's not good for your credit score. Um, and that's just not something that anybody really wants. Uh, nobody wants to pay high interest or even annual fees. There are some credit cards out there that charge a fee just to have it. And you no, know, that's not the right solution for everyone. There are plenty of cards out there that do not charge any sort of annual fee. Um, and other people, you know, may have had some hiccups in the past. Maybe you have some bumps in the road and, and your credit score is a little lower than you want it to be. Um, that does not mean that there is no credit card out there for you. There are credit cards that are meant and are created for people that have had bumps or hiccups. And the whole point of those cards is to get you, up, you know, on the right foot and to help you improve your score. Because the one, another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that if you get a credit card when you have a lower score and you are using it in the right ways, your score starts to improve. And when your score improves, all of a sudden that may make you eligible for a different type of card. So think of it as kind of like a, a, a graduation of sorts. So I just thought these were some kind of like fun, interesting quotes to show you all. And this really, again, speaks to the reason why we have credit match within Experian. Okay. This is the point where I thought it would be most helpful just to actually show you what Credit Match is. So let me just bounce out for a minute from the presentation. And as long, Hiba, as, long as you can still see my browser, because I switched windows yeah. on the computer, I am actually going to log in to a test user for Experian. Uh, so keep in mind, this is not a real person. This is all just kind of like fake information. Um, but Experian.com is our homepage. Uh, there's a very prominent, you know, location that tells you, hey, if you want to sign up for an account with us, this is how you do it. Um, but let's say you already have an account and you sign in for Experian. So let me just do that for you all. Sometimes it takes a minute or so. Okay, so this is just kind of an informational screen. You know, we do offer levels, different levels of membership, but obviously, um, you know, you don't have to pay anything. So once you're an Experian member, this is considered kind of your home screen. It's very prominent here. This this member's you know name, quote unquote name, is William. Um, and you can see his credit score here is a 752. Um, and you have the opportunity to see even your other bureau scores. Um, and right here is a very prominent location for Experian Boost. And I had mentioned that uh, in, in my intro. And just to make sure everybody is aware of what Boost is. Boost is a functionality of Experian's where you can basically tell us if you pay any sort of regular bills like your electricity bill or your, um, you know, your cell phone bill, maybe your cable television bill. Those are things that are regular expenses. And if you tell us at Experian that you pay those on a regular basis, we can actually give you credit, you know, I guess credit isn't the right word, but we'll give you um, a little uh, boost in your credit score for those. And it's again, 100% free and secure. Uh, lots of people, you know, right now the count is at like 77 million. Um, and this is a little explainer as to how you do it. 
And, you know, T-Mobile, AT&T, if you have a, a phone bill, Net, Netflix, I mean, lots of people have Netflix. If you pay a regular Netflix bill that can only be, you know, 10 or $15 a month, um, what we as the Bureau are able to see is that you are kind of dependable and we'll give you com- some extra points for that. So that's kind of exciting. And I just want to make sure everybody was aware of that because you'll see it if you become, you know, if you sign up for a free Experian account. But to get back on the topic of credit match specifically, in the top section here, once you're logged in, here you'll see credit cards basically called out. And if I click on that section, this is where you are in credit match. So this is really what I wanna show you. Experian is unique, um, I would say is unique in the sense of when you're looking for a new credit card, through Experian, what we're able to do is we're able to know what your personal credit profile looks like, and we're able to match you. You're going to see that word a lot, matches. We're able to match you to cards that you have the best chance of being approved for. And again, the reason for that is because we are one of the bureaus. If you were just to look on Google and just say, oh, I want a new credit card, you know, you may get served up a whole bunch of different sites. And you know those sites may not have that background about you. Um, you might have to do a lot more legwork on your own. Um, but the nice thing is with us, you know, we use your credit profile and we really just wanna show you what's best for you. So when you're in this section, you're gonna see your top three matches very prominent here. And you know, we have a percentage that's called a credit match percentage. And this again, is analyzed against your personal credit profile. And it'll tell you that you have pretty good odds of getting that card. So this happens for this person, this happens to be a Bank of America credit card. Um, Then there's a Discover card and another Bank of America card. But if you scroll down, we actually have a very significant list of offers from any number of different banks. And I wanted to touch on a little bit of what to look for when you're thinking of a credit card and and to apply for a credit card. And I think one of the really top things to consider is an annual fee, right? There are lots and lots of credit cards with $0 annual fee. It will not cost you anything out of pocket to have this Discover Chrome card in your wallet. And there are other cards that do charge an annual fee. So in the travel category, for instance, um, sometimes, I mean, this platinum card from American Express, I mean, it's kind of crazy. They charge $695 for an annual fee. <clears throat> that is really not the right fit for a lot of people. I will say personally, it is not the right fit for me. <laughs> I do not have that card. But uh, we try to make things very clear and easy to understand. This card has zero annual fee. Now, the other, I would say, really important thing to look at when you're evaluating credit cards is the APR percentage. Um, To to just make sure that everybody's aware, APR is your annual percentage rate, and that is the interest that Discover would charge you if you uh, you put something on your credit card, but you don't pay for it completely within the first month. Uh, That's when this interest rate comes into play. And I will say interest rates on credit cards tend to be on the higher side, right? Um, If you need um, to buy a car, right? You would actually be shopping for a car loan as opposed to trying to buy a car on your credit card. Um, That's something that I think is is good to keep in mind. Um, And what you might want to consider is that getting a credit card with an interest rate in the teens, it actually, you know, it doesn't play as big of a role as you may fear because as long as you buy, let's say you buy a new blouse um, and you get your credit card bill and that charge is on there, if you pay it the very next month and you pay for that entire blouse, you do not pay any interest whatsoever. And in fact, instead of handing over cash or paying with a check, you actually have a whole month 
to pay it off because that's, you know, you wait for your bill to come from Discover and then Discover gives you a due date, which is usually, you know, a month in the future. So interest rates on credit cards in general are in the teens. I would say low to mid teens, but they can approach, you know, the low to mid twenties as well. Um, other types of loans, you know, are usually lower than that. And for different reasons, you know, you probably don't want to put a lot of high, you know, high, high value purchases on a credit card if you're not sure that you can pay it off completely. The other thing that really is great about paying off a credit card completely every month is that that will improve your credit score. So even if you get a credit limit, let's say you apply for this Discover Chrome card, which has no annual fee, it has, you know, a a relatively lower, I'd say, APR. If you look at this one, it's 11.99 to 22.99. This Bank of America card is <clears throat> two percentage points higher, 13.99 to 23.99 to start. So this one is a little bit lower, which is great. Um, once you get it and you start kind of making purchases and you're paying your bill regularly, your actual credit score, the core number itself, will start to tick up because the credit bureaus, you know, Experian included, see that you are reliable and dependable and you manage your money well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. But we, what we do is we also show two other features of all these cards. One would be any sort of rewards you may earn. And this Discover Chrome card actually gives you one to 2% cash back on things that you buy. And this is a little kind of, we call it a, um, a tool tip. This is a little bubble that will pop up that will kind of give you additional details. So for this Discover Chrome card, if you use it to buy gas for your car, it's you get 2% back and at any restaurant you might eat out at. Um, and that has a limit of $1,000 uh, each quarter, so every three months. But then even outside of those two categories, Discover will give you 1% back on everything else. So that's kind of exciting too, because if, you, you know, if you're filling up your car with gas and it costs $30, uh, you know, you'll get a little bit back as a, as a little reward. And you can redeem those. You can redeem those towards your bill in a future month. You can actually have it deposited into your bank account or Discover will send you a check. So that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Uh, but these are all the different cards with the different fields, you know, that we really like to put front and center. Uh, in my opinion, you know, the APR and the annual fee are really good ones to pay attention to. Now let's say you wanna know even more about this card before you know, possibly clicking to apply. We have a little button here called full details. And if you click full details, a little kind of drawer, we call it a drawer, pops out from the right side of the screen. And this is where we give you all kinds of additional information about that card that comes to us from Discover. So this is what Discover wants you to know about the card. And these are marketing bullets. So it explains more about the cash back that you earn, uh, Discover is pretty famous. Um, all their customer service is done within the United States. So if you ever have a question, you know, the 800 number that's on the back of your card and you call it, if you happen to have a Discover card, uh, they want you to know that they don't use call centers that are overseas. Um, somebody who picks up the phone will definitely be here in the United States. And, and that does really well for Discover. Um, I personally do also have a Discover card and I, and I really like it if I've had a question or um, you know, if you're if you're going on vacation or you're going out of state and you know you're going to be using your credit card in a location that's different than normal, sometimes credit card companies like you to call them and to let them know that so that they don't get suspicious and think somebody has stolen your credit card. Uh, so I know I've done that in the past. I've had to call them just to say, hey, I'm going to be kind of, you know, out for this week coming up. Um, you know, can you put that on file? And they will. Um, and then down here where we have features, this also is just another kind of location where we want you, the user, the, the Experian member, to know some of the best points about this card. So again, no annual fee. It's super, super valuable just not to have to pay an annual fee to carry a credit card. And this kind of gives you some estimates of what you might be able to earn for cash back based on you know, averages across the United States. And our editors, so people that write about credit cards, will have some pros and some cons. So this one, you know, again, it explains that you'll get a little bit of extra cash at gas stations and restaurants when you use this card. Uh, the intro APR for new cardholders is nice. 
Um, a lot of times when you apply for a new credit card, that interest rate doesn't even kick in for you know, 12 to 15 months per se, we can say. Um, and then they do a thing called matching. So with Discover specifically, when you get a new card of theirs, they will um, match every or every um, all the cash back that you earn for the first year. They double at the end of your at the end of that first year. So that's really nice because Discover is motivating you to keep their card and keep using it. You know, and then here's some cons: is just some things to kind of be aware of. Uh, Discover isn't accepted as much outside the United States, but you know, if you don't travel outside of the United States, that might not apply to you. And then that cash back earning does have caps. So this is all a lot of really good information. We really want to make sure that you uh, can access. And on this other little tab, we also populate reviews. So uh, Experian members have the ability to, to tell us if they've gotten a card and what they like or what they don't like about it. And you can kind of give it a rating between you know, one and five stars. So this is where you can see kind of what other people think about Discover, not just what we Experian are telling you about it, but this is what other people are saying. So that's kind of fun too. And then you can go back to all the, the other results. And you can see here that for this particular member, William, uh, he has a Discover card, a, bank, a couple Bank of America cards. Here's a City credit card. Um, and these are all considered the best matches for him. Um, if you're interested in, let's see, a balance transfer. Does everybody know what a balance transfer is? And I'm happy to explain it. Um, a balance transfer is if you happen to have a credit card already, or maybe you have more than one credit card, and you have a number of charges that have built up um, and you're paying interest on those charges, sometimes it can make sense to look for a new credit card because what you can do is the new credit card will give you a 0% interest period if you want to bring that outstanding debt from other cards onto the new one. So that's another really important part, I think, to keep in mind. You know, obviously, if you've never had a credit card before or, you know, and this is your first one, there's all sorts of things to consider. If you already have credit cards and you have just put maybe a decent amount of spending on them, but you're not able to pay it off in full every month, that could be a good opportunity to actually look for a new one. Because that new one, you can, let's say you have an existing Discover card. Um, but you Experian, we are able to say that you're, you're matched to a Bank of America credit card. Bank of America will allow you to take that money that's on your Discover credit card that you're paying that 11% or that 15% on every month and bring it over to Bank of America. Once it's on your Bank of America card, you'll see it on your statement, but you will not pay interest on it for a set period of time. And on this particular uh, Bank of America card, it's 15 billing cycles, so like 15 months. That's over a year. So it's kind of a, think of it as like a nice reset. Um, you can put all that money into a, onto a new card and then start paying it off without continuing to accrue interest. And the banks in general will work with you to, to say, oh, how much should I pay every month if I want to get rid of it by the time you know, my intro period is over? And that way you, you end up saving yourself actually a lot of money. And that's really important because then once it's paid off, you're, you're again, you're starting with a clean slate. So you have no debt, you're not paying that 11, 12, 13% interest. And then if you start you know, putting more, more um, purchases on your card and paying them off every month, then you're not paying interest in, you know, on an ongoing basis either. So that's really nice. Um, but we really try to make it easy for, for you as a member to kind of compare and contrast. You know, your matches, your best matches is always going to be the best place to start. And we, we try to make that easy for you. But you can compare, you know, we have a whole section of all cards that just have no annual fee. So that's really important. And then low interest, right? That low interest, um, kind of lower than maybe others. You know, 13% is kind of normal. Then we're getting up to 14%. Some cards start at 15 or 16. Um, that's really important. So, so this is what we consider the credit match section of Experian. Um, you know, 
these are all cards that are matched at the very bottom of the list. You actually do have the ability to click on a link here that says see unmatched offers. But what we'll do is we'll make it clear to you that these are other cards that we have on our site, but they don't necessarily match your personal profile. So, you know, if you were looking for a card from Wells Fargo specifically, you might see it in this additional section without seeing it, you know, up above. But, you know, these first three are always going to be your top matches. And then down below, you can see more and you can sort by category. Um, and then you always have the opportunity to see, you know, a number of others, but we just want to make it really clear that, that these are unmatched offers. Um, does that make sense? Does it, I'll pause there just for a minute, just to see if anybody had any questions or, or anything that you see on the screen that kind of jumped out at you that would be helpful, because I do have more information, um, but I want to make sure I, I don't skip over anything or anyone, and, and I'm going to jump back to my slides in a minute. But I have a question. Of course, yeah. Okay. Does it depend on, like on the booths, does it depend on which ones you use or utilities or rent or whatever? So there are certain categories of purchases that Boost applies to, and those are utilities. Um, it's, I think, let's see, television. Um, it's cell phones, but as far as like what, let's see what television provider, like if it's Comcast versus, you know. I have um, to yeah, exactly. Like the, the specific type of television that you have should not matter. No. Okay. Yeah. So cell phone and um, the internet and you say utility, those are the three things? Those are the main ones. Um, Let's see if I can go back because the, the home is, yeah. Because these are all just meant as examples. Um, it's very secure. Like here are additional, here are additional kind of, this is additional feedback about Boost, you know, is it secure? Because what you're going to do is you're going to basically link the account that you pay for these bills. So if you have a checking account, all you do is you link your checking account to Experian. And so this is how we describe that, yes, it's very secure to do that. And then the types of bills, here's kind of the consolidated list of types of bills. So your phone line, which could be both a cell phone or a landline phone, your internet bill, your cable or your satellite, you know, utilities could be gas, it could be electricity, it could be water, you know, when you pay your water bill, um, your trash as well, and then video streaming, you know, like Netflix or Hulu, that type of thing. So Boost is very cool. It's, I, I wanna say it's only been around for maybe a year, maybe a little bit less than a year. You all might've even seen a television commercial. We do some television advertising about Boost. Um, but I think, I wanna say it can, it can help improve your credit score by you know, sometimes five, 10 points, possibly a little bit more. And there's really no risk. Um, you know, it's, not like, it's not like your score can go down. This can only really help you. We Great also question. have a question from the chat um, from Isabel. She's asking, um, she just got a card, um, first that she's ever been approved for, and she just got it to improve her score and was wondering if that's enough or should she get another one? No, so that's great. So if you just got your first credit card and you were approved, that's fantastic. Uh, what you want to do is you actually want to use that card. So, you know, next time you fill up your tank, of your car at the gas station. Make sure you use the credit card as opposed to going in and handing over like a $20 bill. Because getting your card is the first step, but what really improves your credit score is the ongoing use. Because let's say you fill up your tank and you use your credit card, then you get your credit card bill and you pay that $20 at that time. Again, it even gives you a little bit built in of a buffer. Then the next month you buy something else. That kind of steady, consistent use and payment by you is what the bureau, so we experience, we see, and that's what's, what's good. That's what helps build and start increasing your credit score. So awesome that you've got basically the first step done and over with, that is fantastic. But just make sure that you don't stop there. Don't keep it in your wallet 
and never use it. Make sure you do use it, but just use it responsibly. Use it only as much as you know that you'll be able to afford at the end of the month. Okay. Um, so Kristen's asking like, is or I guess the general question is like, does Boost recognize only certain companies for utilities and uh, rent and whatnot, or is it like universal? Because they seem to be having a little trouble just getting it set up with, the, with Boost. Oh yeah, you know, I I wouldn't say it's universal. I mean, I don't think anything's really universal these days. Um, but you know, when you sync your bank account so that we can actually tell how you're paying those bills, I'm pretty sure that it's it's clear that it'll tell you like, hey, here are some examples. Here are some of the partners that, or some of the companies that we partner with. Because for utilities, you know, you guys in Texas obviously have your utility companies. I live in California. We have different utility companies. So there's all kinds of different utility companies out there. Um, there, it should be kind of in there within that ecosystem. It'll kind of walk you through step by step. Like, here's what we're going to do in order to sync your accounts. Here's what we'll do to try to read those transactions. And you know, there, again, there's really no downside. So even if you have a very unique or small utility company that we're not able to read, you know, you won't be at any, any sort of disadvantage. Maybe, maybe they'll just ask you, oh, do you have any other utilities or any other bills we could try? That would be, that would be my best advice. Okay, and then do we have a little bit more time for a couple more questions or? Yeah, yeah, I just, let's see, we're about a little more than halfway through. Um, so I think we do have some more time. Sure, okay. Um, so Sarah Lowen wanted to know if we could elaborate on pre-approved credit cards. Um, and then uh, Kathy also asked if um, after paying off her credit cards, most of her credit cards, uh, she noticed that her credit score went down and if that's related to each other. Okay. So. Pre-approved cards is a great question. I actually have some information on that once I jump back to my presentation. So I'm just gonna pause on that for a minute. Now, the reason, so let's see, if somebody says their score went down, the only thing I can think of is if, if you by chance didn't pay it by the deadline. So on your credit card bill, when you receive it, um, they'll say when you have to pay by. So you just wanna make sure that it gets to the bank, you know by the very latest that date, but even a couple of days early is, is even a safer way of doing it. I don't, I don't know specifically, because again, that's kind of a, a more unique situation to, to you as a person. So I don't, I don't have that level of visibility, but just in my kind of past experience, just make sure that you're, you're sending in your check or even you can usually pay online. Like if you log into Discover or you log into Bank of America, you can set up you know, your own account with them so that you can see all your transactions online and then you can pay your bill online too if you sync your bank account. Um, that's also a good way to do it because then you don't have to worry that if your check, you know, if you put a check in the mail and it might get lost or, you know, any, anything can happen with the post office. So that's just another way of kind of giving yourself a little added sense of uh, uh, security that you're, you're definitely paying your bills on time. But I love the question about pre-approved cards because I did, I did have some information on that. So if it's okay with everyone, I just want to jump into the rest of my prezo, and we can always do more questions at the end. So just if I didn't address something, just hang on to them. Um, what I wanted to do is tell you all a little bit about some of the features, additional features within Experience Credit Match system. And one, the first one I like to call customized card offers. And what that includes are both pre-approved and pre-qualified cards. They're slightly different. Some of it is just kind of the terminology, but a pre-approved offer, you'll see when you log into your Experian account, we actually have it um, visually very different. We try to make it stand out. It will have this green little ribbon up here and it'll tell you you're pre-approved. Um, those are cards that you have basically the highest likelihood of getting approved for. And the reason why we can show those to you is because the bank will tell us, Experian, hey, we want people with these very specific um, 
you know, criteria or attributes. So things on a credit report file, that's what they look for. And they'll say, if you find those people, you can say that our card is pre-approved for them. So it just kind of, it, it adds that additional layer of confidence for you. Um, and usually it's about a 90% approval rate. So 90% is, is very, very high to get approved for a card. Um, and again, when you're in your own personal Experian account, you'll, it should be very apparent. We have a green ribbon. We have this green shaded background. I mean, compared to the card that's right below, you know, which is kind of a standard white background. Um, and even the button to click is a different color. That button to click is the green color uh, where we say unlock your offer. Uh, so pre-approved offers are something great. We launched them in 2019. Uh, so they've been around for a number of years. And that's something huge to look out for. The other type of cards are pre-qualified or pre-screened. We offer those from both Discover and American Express. And sometimes what the bank will do is they will give us a different type of the same card. So if it's American Express, and here on my screenshot, you can see it's called the Blue Cash Everyday Card. It's like a cashback card, similar to the Discover one we were talking about earlier, the Chrome. Um, Blue Cash Everyday will have maybe even a little bit better of a bonus than anybody could get. You know, just any general person from the United States might not be eligible for. But if you're on Experian and you're looking at it through Credit Match, American Express knows more about you. And if you're the type of person they're looking for, they may offer you something that is only available on our site. So again, same, also same attributes as, as um, pre-approved, right? Your approval odds are much higher. And another, I think, important thing to consider is that if you do decide that one of these pre-qualified, pre-screened, pre-approved offers are for you, if that's one that you want, the actual application process a lot of times is easier. So like when you click this button to go over to the Discover website, what we can do is, since we know who you are, the application is already partially filled out for you. So that's actually something that's also kind of neat is that, you know, just the application process can be a little intimidating. You have to have so much information about yourself sometimes. Um, but coming from a site like Experian, where we already know who you are, we try to make that as easy as possible for you. So I hope that answers the question about uh, pre-approved offers, pre-qualified, pre-screened. You will see those, or you may, I won't say you will, but you may see those in your account if you sign up for an Experian account and you go to the credit match section. Uh, they are definitely visually different. Um, and those, I would say, are even better than the matches, the ones that are matched for you. Because if those are matched for you and you're pre-qualified, that's basically like, the best of the best, if that makes sense. And I just wanted to show you guys, just before we move on to the next topic, these are the banks that we actually partner with for those types of offers. So American Express and Discover are two that I already mentioned. Credit One Bank is another bank that has a lot of cards and they are built and designed for people that don't necessarily have super high credit scores. So Credit One Bank is more for like the middle of the road or possibly even the lower credit spectrum. So that's a really good one to look out for, Credit One Bank. Um, and then there's Allo and First Premier Bank. So those are just some of the brands I wanted to show you all that if you were to sign up for an Experian account, you may actually see some of those offers that are you know, pre-approved, pre-qualified, or pre-screened. All right, another more recent feature that we added to Credit Match is called a no impact card offer. And here's just a little example of a quote that we, that we heard from, from some of our members. Um, you know, they want more choices to, to see something that's pre-approved for them because a hard inquiry, and let me explain what a hard inquiry means because that might be a little technical. When you decide to apply for a credit card with a bank, what they do is they check your credit profile, uh, you know, obviously with Experian, but there's three credit bureaus. So they may check your credit profile against not just us, but possibly one of the two other bureaus. And that's what's called a hard inquiry. So on your credit profile, that 
is something that stays on there. Like if you, if you apply for a lot of credit cards, you'll start having a lot of hard inquiries and that can affect your score. So that's another reason why you really want to be picky and choosy and make sure that you are applying for really the best card for your personal circumstances. Because if you apply for too many of them and you're not able to get the first few, but then you do get maybe the fourth or the fifth one that you apply for, all those kind of count as little pings on your score and it will decrease your score. It doesn't decrease it permanently, but it does decrease it. So that's not something that most people are really uh, very happy about. However, we at Experian partner with Apple. And I wanted to give you this example because I know so many people have uh, an Apple iPhone. Apple actually issues their own credit card and it's called the Apple card. And they go about the application process a little differently than a lot of the other big banks do. So with Discover or Credit One Bank, um, Dis uh, Apple does something called a no impact application process. And um, Apple is unique. We send out emails to our members about Apple Card. So if you create an Experian account, you may actually receive an email just like this on this slide to the right. Um, but I wanted to explain how their application process is different. If you decide you're interested in an Apple Card and you want to apply, what Apple does is it just takes your general information first and does a soft inquiry rather than a hard inquiry. So what they do is they just validate that you are who you say you are, and they are able to kind of determine if you match the type of person that they want to give a card to. But then at that point, they give the power back to you. So they will tell you, yes, we're willing to give you an Apple card or no, you don't really match the profile of who we're looking for. So if they say no, you actually don't have any negative effect at all because it's only a soft inquiry. All they did was validate your identity. And if they don't accept you, that's okay. That will not impact your credit score. If they say, yes, you are who we're looking for, and you want to accept it, then that's an additional step. You say, yes, I would like the Apple card. And then they do the hard inquiry at that time. So you really actually have an additional layer that allows you to make sure that the Apple card is what you want, right? If Apple says that they're not gonna give you one, that doesn't penalize you. If Apple says they will give you one, but you change your mind and you don't want it anymore, Again, no negative effect, it won't hurt your credit score. So that's kind of an exciting thing that I wanna say not many banks actually do because once you apply for a credit card, you know, you've applied, there's really no difference. Apple has what they've decided to do is kind of try to make it even less um, risky for you, the consumer. So I wanted to throw this out here as kind of a really cool example um, the Apple card, you know, it, it's been available, I think since last year, it's relatively new as well. It, it hasn't been around a really long time. And if you do have an iPhone, I think it automatically, I don't have, I don't have an iPhone actually, which is kind of weird to say, but I don't, I'm an Android person. Um, but if you have an iPhone, the card actually gets automatically, um, loaded to your wallet. So it has all this kind of cool, fancy features. It actually does give you some cash back between one and 3%. Um, and I think it gets loaded as, you know, your, if there's like an Apple savings bank. So the, the really nice thing about an Apple card is that they allow you to apply for it without possibly hurting your credit score and, and definitely incurring a hard inquiry. So that's something that's also relatively new on Experian. And then there's just a couple, just, I think these are the last few slides I have, and then I'll go back to any other questions that you want to ask me. But these are just a couple more advanced things you can do on Experian with Credit Match. And here are some more quotes. These are things that people have told us that they were looking for. You know, they want to see perks on their card, right? They want to know, is there something they're missing out on? Um, at the same time, there's just so many cards out there. It's overwhelming. It's hard to really fully analyze and to find what they're looking for. So, you know, we want to help improve that process. And we came up with something called highlight gaps. And this is, let me see if this will work. This is a little video. 
So this is an example of somebody who's in Experian in their own account, and they're typing in what credit card that they have. And in this example, it's an American Express Serve cash card. This little section will tell you what that card is like. Okay, it's a card with no annual fee, but that's missing. So that means this American Express card that you said you have has one. That's an opportunity for you. Um, let's see, a hotel airline card. You know, you don't have one of those, but maybe you'd want to consider one. And then there's a transferable rewards card, such as Sapphire Reserve. Maybe there's, a, there, you know, you might want to consider something out there. So this, think of this as the opportunity to tell Experian exactly what card you have. And A, we won't show that card to you anymore because you don't need to see a card that you already have. You know, it's not like you get a second of the same card. That doesn't make sense. But also, we're, if you tell us what credit card you have, then we can tell you what might be missing. So if you have a no annual fee card, but it doesn't give you any cash back, we could tell you, oh, there's a match in your credit card list that has some cash back. So if you're interested, you might want to apply for that card. So we call that highlight gaps. And that was just a little kind of explainer demo. But you know, it's the four type of cards that everyone should have. And it helps you compare cards to other ones in our marketplace. And it's a way for us to kind of make recommendations to you. And we just launched this in December of last year. So again, it's a relatively new feature. We're really excited about it. We love when people use it. Um, and if you think about it, on your credit score file, um, when you have a credit card, you see it as a line item, but from the bank. So let's say you have a Discover Chrome card. On your credit profile, you'll, it'll say you have a line of credit with Discover, but it won't say Discover Chrome. So we as the bureau, like we need you to tell us, oh yes, that line item on my credit file represents the Discover Chrome. It doesn't represent the Discover Miles or the Discover Cashback. Because you know, Discover offers, I want to say like four or five different cards. Um, but on your on your profile, like on your credit profile, it only shows as Discover. So we wanted to add increased functionality for you to tell us, well, yes, that Discover line item actually represents the Discover Chrome. And then if you tell us you have the Discover Chrome, we can tell you some other features that might be missing from the Chrome that you could still get if you were to look at the cards that you're matched to. So that's really the end of my formal slides. Um, Habar, are there any other questions that anyone added to the chat? Or feel free to speak up if, if you guys have anything else for me. But uh, you know, my, my intention for this session was just to kind of talk about the credit card selection process, try to make it a little less intimidating. Um, it can seem intimidating just because there are so many of them out there, but the banks do that because they want to appeal to as many types of people as possible. So I, I just really don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, credit cards, that, that I could never get a credit card. Like, there's nothing out there for me because that's really not true these days. Uh, banks have really made a big effort to be inclusive and try to offer something for everybody. You know, you may not be able to get a Chase card, but if you don't, if you're not able to get a Chase card, that's okay because there are other banks that probably have something that's even better for you.